All right, y'all, I got the green light that my floors are waxed, which means that I can set back up my classroom. And I know a lot of teachers wait until the in-service starts. I am not that teacher because as an influencer, I film videos for y'all over the summer and also during in-service, it is super overwhelming. So the last thing I wanna be doing is starting out the year overwhelmed. So I want my classroom set back up immediately. And then that way in-service is all about planning and all the other things that we have to do. So let's get started. see my lights are on because they are on a timer. Look at that beautiful shiny floor. As a teacher there are a few things that are more beautiful. Will this last? Absolutely not. But it is a sight to behold. So this is what we're looking like. Pro tip, figure out what the override is for your AC because mine in the summer is not on, but there's a little trick. It's like two or three clicks. You see that? Voila, now I'm not sweating. Hopefully, as much. <laughs> so, <clears throat> The chairs are not where they're supposed to go, but my custodians are amazing. We leave a map on our whiteboard and they put it back like this. So that is huge and it's so amazing that they do that. I've been at schools where you come in and it's just in a mountain. So it's not exactly, but it's very close, which makes life so much easier. So I've got all of this stuff stored up here. I've got stuff stored over here on this countertop. And these are all things that are kind of like mine and they're not, hola, they're not the desks, they're not school issued stuff. So we kind of take care of that. And then of course in my science closet, it's kind of hard to open. I told them not to wax the floors in there and that gives me a place to store as well. Every year as I'm sharing, I think it's always important for new teachers because a lot of times that's who's viewing my videos to keep in mind that this is year 10 for me. It's year three in this classroom, and this is the first year where I haven't been doing projects in my classroom over the summer. Nothing really is changing, and it feels so nice to finally be at a place where I'm like, we're gonna focus just on improving what we've been doing and not really changing anything. Also, social media is going to make your classroom look differently because you are getting Amazon affiliate money, you are getting ads, you're getting sponsored products sent to your classroom. And if that's something that you're really interested in, then you can also kind of create that same journey because I started this five, six years ago as a Instagram teacher, which turned into YouTube and TikTok and TPT. But the biggest thing when you start a classroom is just focusing on the basics. Where is everything going to go? What's your organization? What are students going to do when they turn in work? All of those things that matter on a day-to-day -day basis that are going to help improve your classroom management, that's going to help improve you and how you feel as a teacher. So it can be overwhelming when you get into that classroom, like when I look at all of this stuff. So I always focus on one space at a time. So I'm gonna focus on getting all of this stuff down first and getting my desks put where they're supposed to go. Um, but when you walk into a brand new classroom, when I walked into this one, the teacher here before me was absolutely phenomenal. And sometimes phenomenal teachers when they retire have hoarded science materials for about 30 years. And I was so overwhelmed that one tip I would give you is I took went through all the stuff that I wanted to keep and get rid of, and I started placing a lot of the stuff out in the hallway. So that way, when I was in the classroom, I could just focus on 
what I was doing right then. Because when I looked at all of it together, I couldn't figure out the room because there was so much stuff in here. So if you have the ability to take stuff out of your classroom, it might seem like a lot of work, but I took all of the junk and clutter out in the hallway, lined it up against the wall, and then I just dealt with it as I could, and that helped my anxiety a lot. But luckily we're at a place to where I'm just putting back my stuff, which feels good. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with this stuff and the desks over here. I started by scooting my groups back to where they go. I have five groups and then my gold medal area, which you can look at my classroom management YouTube video for more about that reward system. But I also had to move the chairs back where they went because they're numbered one to 28. And then of course I wiped down the desks because they had gotten dirty over the summer. All right, while I'm thinking about it, uh, my ring light is in my closet buried and I can't get it. Um, <laughs> Put felt pads on everything. I get felt pads at Costco and it makes moving your stuff around so easy. But now that these floors are fresh and clean, I want them to stay that way. I'm kind of a solitude. I like to not be overwhelmed. Other people just overwhelm me because I know what I'm doing. So these felt pads make it to where I can move stuff that if they didn't have felt pads on, it would be a struggle by myself, uh, but now it's not. So speaking of getting started with one place, I'm gonna get started with my desk area because as you can see, all of the bookshelf stuff is sitting here. And this is an area that like helps keep me calm. Uh, so I'm gonna start here in this corner and that way I'll put everything back together here. And then usually I go around the room this way. So that way it's just one thing at a time. So let's do it. I like to start with this area as far as setting it up because it's my little bubble. It's my teacher corner. This is my student help desk. I've got my bookshelves, all of the things that I love on display, whether it be photos of travels, you know, Harry Potter and my personality. And this little corner is my safe space. So this is where I start. And there's also just so much stuff. So once I do this, I feel way less overwhelmed. I wanted to show you all these little clear decorating clips because these line, these LEDs line my dry erase board, but there was extra. So I decided to have them go behind my desk on my bookshelf and so of course the bookshelves have to come out of the classroom so look how easy it is to pop these lights in and out with one hand it's not as easy <laughs> but if you have to take them down over the summer because you're fire marshal just saying it's very easy i've got my little desk area starting to come back together and I feel so much less anxious because this is my space. Also, back here, I put things that I love that mean something to me. And when you're setting up your classroom, you don't have to worry about like trends or what's cute. And if you, if that's you, do it. Absolutely. But like, it's your personality. So it's just like a house, whatever you want, like things that are special to you. I went to the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. So that's a fun reminder. A student gave me this book. She was obsessed with Harry Potter, so we connected over that. I went to Rio de Janeiro for Carnival this year. A teacher from Australia, Fairly, sent me this. She had been live streaming when my rabbits had babies in the classroom, and then she got to meet them in person. I went to Japan saw the floating Tory gates. I've got this little Eiffel Tower, one of my favorite places. So anyways, this area is all about the things that I love. And also it's a way that students connect to me because the second they come in, they ask like, oh, you're a Gryffindor? And I get a lot of y'all are not Harry Potter people. It's nerdy, whatever. So you, if you're into Star Wars, if you're into sports, whatever it may be, 
putting yourself into your classroom is not just good for you and putting your passions on display and making you happy, but also for your students. So that's what I do in my little area. I have one of these that fell off, so I wanted to show you since I'm replacing one of them. They're command clear decorating clips. One tip for the corners, which tend to be where they fall off, is you can take a dab of hot glue and those areas, they're not gonna budge after that. So that's one thing I've learned, but these little guys, they have them in different sizes, are amazing. Command, you should be sponsoring me. Okay, so this next thing was on the counter, and this is a shoe screen. This is a 30 slot shoe tree from Walmart, it's mainstays. And I did this because my headphones were constantly getting tangled together and it was a nightmare. So this has 30 slots. When I've had more than 30 students, I did a little command hook on the side. And in my old classroom, I numbered them. It's not really been as big of an issue here. So I don't now, they just grab whichever pair they want, but it used to be like one through six or one through five, and they would have that spot. So you know if a pair is going missing, being damaged all the time, where to look. So this thing is a lifesaver. Another marble. <laughs> you know the phrase, you've lost your marbles? Well, I did a STEM roller coaster project. I found about 20 marbles in all sorts of places. This one was in that plant. <laughs> this right here, I had these made, so obviously not super affordable, but the thing that's inside of them I've always had, and these are cardboard mailbox sorters. And when I put this together, I have three I have earth science here. I used to teach physical science, life science. This is their turn-in basket. This is where all of the assignments go. So the first thing is the syllabus. Then we've got our warm-ups. Then we've got each assignment thereafter. Now, a lot of assignments are digital, but when there's a paper copy, it's gonna go down here. So if a student misses a day, if they lost it, if they have missing work, they know to go and look and see what number it is and then grab that extra copy. So this is how I organize missing work. And y'all, it is such a game changer. It's organized and it's the same in all my classes. So these mailbox orders saved my life. And of course, the turn-in basket. I like these little shelves from Amazon. All of my student supplies are right here, like Clorox wipes, hand sanitizer, tissue, stapler, uh, tape, recycling, all that. I have broken a sweat and I'm out of breath which is normal for classroom setup. But I was gonna say right here, y'all, our custodians have to take everything out of every classroom in the entire building. It's a huge undertaking. I actually move my desks out for them because they're on felt pads and they've been so behind and they do such an amazing job. So I left them this note and a classroom map and they put it all back, which is just so incredible. So whether it's just saying thank you, leaving a note, making them something like a baked good, they work so hard over the summer and I really appreciate them. And y'all, this classroom looks amazing. So shout out to all of our custodians because y'all are doing the Lord's work. Next, I wanted to get everything off of these upper cabinets. And once I do this, I was flipping the frames back around, which is one of my favorite things in my classroom, the gallery wall and these images. I actually created these last school year for the units that I teach and they're available in my Teachers Pay Teacher store and linked down below in the description. I absolutely love them and I'm so glad I created them and it's a good visual for students to see what we're gonna learn in science. All right, I am feeling good. We got all of the stuff down off of my cabinets. All of the chairs are back in place. The tops of the desks are clean because they always get dirty when the chairs get put on them. We've got my desk area set back up. I need to plug up all the technology, that's always fun everything but my rug is back up here because i'm cleaning it and i'm about to put felt pads on the bottom of this lettuce grow tower so it slides more easily and doesn't scratch the floor and then these two got to come down but i might wait for somebody to help me because that is hard to get down so 
I'm feeling good. I feel like I got a lot done for one day. So everything is put back for the most part, which makes me feel good. It's like a sigh of relief. And now the things left are the projects and I've been putting them on my whiteboard. And this helps me remember, and also I'm not gonna do them all. And they're not all things that have to get done. It's just my list. So let me show you. This is a great way not to be too overwhelmed, especially if you're in a new classroom. Um, these were the things that I wanted to do today and I did those. I need to touch up the paint on the desks. Do I have to? No, but I want to, I zip tie them together. So of course I have to cut those for summer. Um, that helps keeping them together as groups. I've got some missing seat numbers. Rewiring technology is a booger. Uh, there's bugs in these lights that drive me nuts. So I always get those out over summer. Um, there's some things that need to be fixed. And then, yeah, my front outlet stopped working. This is the second summer in a row. And I have some broken blinds that they found. They bought a new set for, so. That's my list, and of course it will continue to grow, but at least when I come back, it looks like my classroom again.